welcome to Broken Entertainment. So, the journey to this video started when I was watching a video by Eric July, uh, also known as Young Rippa on YouTube, and he's a guy that's kind of, he started out, at least for me, I start, started uh, listening to his videos when he was talking about comics, and he was talking about how traditionally published comics are increasingly, you know, that's Marvel and DC, are increasingly um, bad in all the various ways that many numerous people have gone over why they're bad. And the sales numbers reflect this. Now, the, the comic book publishers will tell you, oh, no, look, comics are having their greatest year in history. Uh, well, yeah, that's because they stopped actually reporting individual numbers, and they lumped everything together, including graphic novels, and then they lumped in anime. and Or, sorry, manga. And once manga outs paces comic sales by ridiculous margins. It's not even close. And the top graphic novels year after year over the last several years have been all Japanese made. Western comics have completely fallen out of the category altogether. So Western comics, Superman, Batman, The Avengers, Marvel, DC, they are doing very poorly. Comic book shops have been closing across the country or being forced to rely on other term other means of income and he got kind of he gets kind of political after a while and I don't, you know i'm not here for politics i'm not interested in discussing my politics or anybody else's it's not why i'm on youtube it's not why i consume entertainment uh it's one of my big problems with modern entertainment is that it just hits you over the head with politics over and over again uh, allegory and everything has just gone out the window for modern day this, that, and the other thing. But I kind of, I stayed subscribed. I'm like, you know, sometimes he talks about comics still. So I had him kind of in the background where a video would come up every now and then. I'd be like, oh, that, that's interesting. I'll watch that. Then he made the announcement of the Ripiverse, where he's making his own comic book company. He's producing comics not through, and this this looks like a crowdfunder funded campaign, but it's not. He's producing comics not through crowdfunding, but actually making his own company with his own dollars, putting himself on the line, and putting comics out there. This uh, first campaign is a 96-page graphic novel for $35. Various covers and all that stuff. And I knew he was kind of going in this direction, but it's like, uh, you know, another, another indie comic book. Uh, I support a lot of those. Nothing about it that had come out to that point had particularly interested me, so I'm like, eh, you know, maybe. Uh, then he came out with his trailer announcing his company and announcing his intentions, and that's where I started to pay attention, because I said, you know what? That's exactly what I'm looking for. That's exactly the kind of company I'm interested in. So you take a look. I'm going to let I'm going to let this video play. But I I want you to get a sense for what it is that got my attention. I'm Eric July, founder, owner, and writer. Welcome to the Riververse. Riververse is the result of a comic book lifer that wanted to be a part of the solution instead of always griping about the problem. Now, don't get me wrong, this was always a part of my aspirations. However, the current climate certainly sped things up. You've watched some of your favorite comic book characters be bastardized to the point to where they're completely unrecognizable. They're just used as career stepping stones for a lot of writers that don't care about the lore. Some even despise their fans. Those are people that just want to tell stories that represent their social political views, even if they don't make sense for the characters that they're writing. And of course, these mega corporations that control these properties don't exactly make it easy for you to get in and understand what's canon. So maybe it's time for something new. Let's stop it right there. So, exactly, to me, that's exactly what I'm talking about when I say I'm tired of modern entertainment. I'm tired of being beat over the head. You know, you can't read most modern comics and, and get anything out of it that's entertaining. Even when they announce something, it's like, ugh. 
Yeah, of course. You know, oh, 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 this character is gay now. Oh, this character is black now. Oh, this character is a woman now. And you're like, but that's not what got me interested in the comic or that character. When I started watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe back in ye olden times, I knew nothing about most of Marvel stuff. And I watched Iron Man, I'm like, that's cool. And then I watched Thor, and I'm like, that is really interesting character. I want to know more. I want to read his comics. So I went into the comic book store, and I looked for Thor, and it didn't exist. Because they'd replaced Thor with a woman. And I'm like, but that's not... I'm not interested in that. I want to see Thor. Like, what is going on here? And then, then later down the road, Iron Man replaced. And... Here lately, uh, Superman had a son. Everybody really liked him as a character. He was really young. Uh, he interacted with Batman's son. They are about the same age. They had a good middle grade uh, series of graphic novels that people really enjoyed. And what happened? Oh, we want a gay Superman. So they aged him up and they made him gay. And it's like, dude, this that's not why people liked Jonathan Kent. His name was Jonathan Kent. It's not people. why people like Jonathan Kent. They liked him in that middle-aged category, so the middle-aged, middle-grade category. And you don't need any of that junk in the middle-grade category, right? You know, talking about like 10 and 11-year-olds. But they had to get that headline. It was all they cared about. And this, this is because, what was the headline? Oh, Superman's gay now. That's all they cared about. They didn't care about the character. They didn't care about representation. They cared about getting their headline, patting themselves on the back. Yay, good job, everybody. Yay. And nobody reads the character anymore. Nobody reads Superman anymore either because they, they pushed him off into some weird side stuff uh, and don't even really refer to him as Superman anymore uh, in continuity. And then they killed him off. So... When I saw this video and I saw that part, I'm like, yes, that's what I want. And it instantly got my attention. So, and, and I'll put a link to this video in the description so you can see the whole thing. The thing is, these characters, these stories, our entertainment has been going downhill for years now. And I've been saying for the last couple of years, you know, it's at the beginning of my video, the Renaissance is coming. Because more people have more access to greater technology than ever before in the history of the human race to produce their own entertainment and put it out there for everybody to see. And you don't hear about it. You don't hear about it in the mainstream media because they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to admit what is going on. But the Renaissance, I am no longer convinced it's coming. It's here. Because this man comes out and he announces his campaign. And he's got a good following on YouTube. But he's not, he doesn't have like 10 million people or anything. But he's got a good following. 486,000 subscribers. The first day, a million dollars. This is where it sits right now. Almost, almost three million dollars. 30,481 total purchases. 66 days remaining. More than 2,000% of the revenue goal. And this book's done. Okay, this isn't a campaign to get it done. It's been written, published, printed. It's done. It's going to ship out. This is just the beginning. We've seen Comicsgate, okay? We've seen this wave of independent comics creators who have been putting out good comics, good material. It's fun to read. I've got a lot of it. But it's starting to hit a wave where it's going up because you're getting guys like this and you're getting guys and you're seeing more people move to these indie comics and I have not talked to anybody that buys comics and actually pays attention and said you know what indie comics are doing really good and had them go I don't know what you're talking about they're like oh yeah I buy indie comics too because they're they're good they're out there they're easy to get you know, you go to Kickstarter, you go to Indiegogo, you drop however much money, you get the book. It takes a while, because it's crowdfunding, and you read it, and you're like, wow, that was really good. 
you know, I, I have, right now, uh, my pull is limited to Power Rangers and Catwoman. And Catwoman was because Ram V was doing it, and I really liked his work. Now he's not, so who knows. All of my other comics, every single one, is indie. That's not going to change. That's going to get higher. And you already have people who are buying indie who don't focus on this stuff. They're not like, oh yeah, the culture war, blah, 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 blah. They just buy comics and they know that they go to Indiegogo and they're like, oh, a comic book. That's interesting. Let me look at that. That's where we're getting. Where the indie comics are no longer... Oh, that's surprising. I didn't know people made their own comics. It's now... Oh, yeah, I'm going to check out these indie guys, too. And there's a lot of people that are fed up with the main companies that are looking for a company like this. Now, he's getting attacked by the people who support the mainstream industry. They don't like competition. Now, that's not where it ends, though. Ripiverse is very interesting, and, and indie comics is very interesting. But you're starting to see a shift in novel publication. And it's been going on for a while, but now it's very, very noticeable. It's not just that self-published books make up a huge chunk of the market. And they do, we'll get to that. You now have established, traditionally published authors self-publishing. Used to be the other way around. Self-publish, hopefully an agent sees it and likes it, or a publishing company sees it and likes it, you become traditionally published. Now... You're traditionally published, and you're self-published. This is Brandon Sanderson. He self-published with a campaign uh, for novels. It's all self-published, all under Dragonsteel. He's traditionally published. He has an agent. He could have had all of these published traditionally very, very easily. And what does he do? He goes out. He puts his own name on it, Dragonsteel. Runs a Kickstarter campaign, $41 million. 185,341 backers. Christopher Rocchio, science fantasy author. Traditionally published. He started to self-publish some of the short stories that he writes. So it's no longer a question of, is self-publishing valued? Does it have any real impact? Is self-publishing something that people do that are actually good at writing? Now the question is, why does Brandon Sanderson feel the need to self-publish four novels. If you're not familiar, Brandon Sanderson is one of the names in fantasy. He finished writing the Wheel of Time series. He has written countless novels, significant entries into the fantasy genre, and by many is considered one of the greatest living fantasy authors of his age. And he self-published four books. Not first, second. So if you're a traditional publishing company, you've got to ask yourself, why does Brandon Sanderson feel the need to self-publish these four books? It's not like he couldn't go to his agent and say, hey, I've got four more books, here you go. So why? What is, what is going on? That's what they should be asking themselves. And what we need to be seeing is the same question. What is going on? And the answer... It's complicated. But in part, the answer is traditional publishing companies are gatekeeping hard. And they're doing it in a way that pushes people to self-publish. The art is being removed by traditional publishing, and they're just trying to tick all the right boxes, just like the traditionally published comic companies. Traditional publishing companies aren't looking for quality. They're looking for boxes. And they're looking to control what's coming out. They're not interested in anyone's story. They're not interested in a, a, a person of color's story if that story doesn't fit what they're looking for in terms of what social boxes does it check off, what kind of characters does it have? Does it tell the right kind of story for what we are thinking people need to see? It's no longer about the important things, 
what sells, what do people want, what's in demand, what high quality books are out there being written by who cares. Now, if you're a minority and you want to get published, you might sound like your best bet is to go out and get traditionally published, but if you're telling a story that doesn't follow a certain pattern, good luck. Because the traditional publishing companies and agents are gatekeeping harder than ever while patting themselves on the back. And the other thing they're doing that traditional publishing has done for years is they'll publish any old garbage if it's written by somebody with names. And what you're getting now is traditional published authors saying, I'm going to self-publish because you know what self-publishing allows you to do? Control all of it. You control the cover, you control the editors, you control every aspect of the process, and traditional publishing has little to offer. You don't have to pay for any of that. That's what traditional publishing has to offer now. Your advance, if you don't make your advance back, nah, we're not going to pick up another one of your books. They're just not interested in this stuff. So self-published authors or traditional published authors are saying, you know, I have a lot more control and I got to do all the marketing myself anyway. This is a uh, ebook specific, but that's where you see a lot of this. In the latest report from author earnings, there's only one logical conclusion to make. Readers have more than accepted Indian self-published authors and their books and ebooks. There's no doubt now as all the major indicators such as unit sales, royalty income, market share, and percentage of titles and best-selling lists are all pointing high north for self-publishers. The conclusion the report reads, We live in exciting times. Today it is possible to be a full-time professional author, quietly earning 50000 a year, even six figures a year, without ever sending a query letter to anyone. On Amazon alone, the data shows over a thousand indie authors earning a full-time living right now with their self-published titles. The only gatekeepers that matter now are the readers, and those are the only ones that should have ever mattered. So here they have a graph. Market share. 45% of the market indie published. Decreasing from 40% to 20, under 25, the big five. Then you got your usual, you know, four <coughs> small or medium publishers, Amazon published, uh, uncategorized. These two right here tell you everything you need to know. And that was from 2014 to 2016. These numbers aren't, aren't changing other than to increase. Indie published, market share, way up. Big five, way down. Renaissance is here. And it's only going to take off more. Self-publishing, indie creation gives you total control. It allows you a direct connection. A direct connection with readers, potential readers, and people who are just kind of tired of what the indie or what the traditional scene has to offer. It's here. We're there. It's... Brandon Sanderson has mentioned more than once that he's not sure traditional publishing is going to be around in the next 10 to 20 years. He, uh, he might have an idea of what he's talking about. If you're a creator or want to be a creator, man, get out there and do it. Forget the traditional system. Just forget it. You have direct connection to your customers direct connection to readers and fans, and you control the whole process. Yes, it's expensive, but it's worth it. For that level of availability and that level of control and the ability to tell any story you want, regardless of your race, your age, or your gender. Tell whatever story you want and put it out there. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Ring the bell for notifications, and I will see you next time.